This is a Bessler 45H enlarger. Right now it's bolted to a piece of three quarter inch plywood and it's set on a porch furniture end table. Holes were drilled that were a little bit smaller than the threads and then I held the enlarger up with one hand started the threading and use a ratchet wrench to screw them in. The tips protruded beyond the three quarter inch plywood and I used a, uh, a drill with a sanding disc to buzz them off. This is a Saunders 16 by 20 easel. That's as large as I want to get. So the distances to set the head of the enlarger have to go from the easel where the paper will be. I got it from Bernie's on the north side. There's a front view. Right now the negative carrier area is open. This enlarger may be used with all the different sizes of film that the 23C can do. In addition, it'll do 70 millimeter film and 4x5 sheet film. The 8322 glassless negative carrier is in the rack. Now the head of the enlarger is not up all the way. So there's a little bit of room to the ceiling. The enlarger, if moved all the way up, would uh, make a larger picture. 20 by 24, I guess. But I don't get that big. So you need a certain amount of headroom. Let's measure it. So the tape said 51 and a half, so that's 52, 53, 54. So the enlarger requires 55 inches from the top of the Sanders easel board or from the paper. You got three quarters of an inch for the plywood base. You got one and a half inches for the Sanders. My enlarger table is only 52 inches from the ceiling. Now 135 millimeter lens lets you get shorter. You don't need as much headroom. All right, the 135 was put in and the head is at the same height that it was for the 161. So now I'm cranking it down and focusing and somewhere in there will be uh, the place to put the head for the 135. As you can see it's considerably lower. Now the tape reads 46 and a half so that's 47, 48, 49, that's 50, 50 and 3 quarters, 51 and 3 quarters. Now you need 52 inches, not 57 inches. So 52 inches gives me a uh, quarter inch headroom. I can make 16 by 20 prints if I use a 135 millimeter lens and I could set the enlarger on the countertop that I have. All right, looking up at the enlarger, this is the filter drawer. Slides out. There is no below the lens stage for filters. It's a built-in feature. The enlarger came with this red filter in the drawer. It's a safe light filter. 
Slides in, slides out. I couldn't see any light. When I looked in the lens, it was red. So I pulled this thing and there was a red filter in there. Now to get it out, you have to poke a pencil in this hole or something. Like that. The enlarger was made to use these filters. These are poly contrast filters, obviously made by Bessler. Nice little box with a hinge thing on it. It has these uh, seven filters plus a safe light filter. That's just like the one I got with the camera, with the enlarger, so I have two of them. It goes from one to four in half steps. There are different colors to create contrast. That's poly contrast filter set 411A. When I got the enlarger, it, it had this uh, 6x6 holder in it, and this is a 2424N type. Holds the uh, 120 film. What I'm going to do is cut it, either cut this one or another one, so that I could fit the 70 millimeter film that, that I have with the Kodak Monitor 616 camera that I had refurbished. So I need a film holder for it. Now that's one way to do it. But I also got the 8341 glass filter holder and it has replacement glass in it that I bought and I uh, replaced the broken glasses with anti-Newton glass on top and clear glass on the bottom. This is quite easy to do. There's only two screws to loosen and remove. The glass is beveled. It fit perfectly. I bought it in the United States from the company Focal something, Focal Point I think. They had two of them. It's out of stock right now but they may make some more. I'm sure if you ask them they will. Now this has got to be the coolest thing I've ever seen. This is called a Nega Flat. And it fits. And what you do is you, you crank this lever. It opens up these little flaps. You slide a sheet of film in there. 4x5 sheet film. It closes, grabs, and then stretches it. It's really cool. And just to prove that it fits with the little four little pins, it's square, it's not round, you know. See? Fits. Perfect. And that's what you get. With 4x5 sheet film, but when I put the glass plate over top of the base and put it up into the enlarger, then the corners are not cropped and I get a bigger picture almost all of the glass, so it's very usable. Let me demonstrate. Alright, there's still a pin or two in there. And this is cut very closely to an exact 4x5. So I lay the glass on top of the bottom where the plate would sit on inside the cardboard, you see. And you get, oh, just what is that? About an eighth of an inch all around. And I pop this up into the enlarger head and then I get a full image with almost no cropping at all on the corners. And of course the Nega Flat doesn't give you any cropping either and neither does a, uh, a regular uh, 8322 negative holder for 4x5. 
if the glass was cut a little bit small, three and seven eighths inches, it will fit into the nega flat. It doesn't crop a whole lot. Well, it does crop a whole lot. This enlarger takes a 75 watt bulb or a 150 watt bulb. I'm just using the 75s. I got four bulbs, that's all I need. The bulb is easily removed by loosening this set screw and there's the bulb. Okay, and that's the 75 watt I don't know if you can see that. That's a live spider. He attacked me. 75 watt ENL. Photo ENL. GE. Just in case you were wondering. It's real easy to take apart. The set screws here. We'll take off the top half of the condenser just to show you some of the features. That's where the bulb goes. There's the top of the glass which I cleaned with paper towel and a dust blower and Windex. Real easy to take care of. I guess you would put the heat absorbing glass in here between the bulb and the condenser, but I'm not buying one. I have one for the 23C, but uh, I'm not going to use it. Now, to get the condenser head off, you just pull these and lift. It's heavy too. See? The 4x5 glass is bigger than that. <clears throat> so no matter what you do, you're going to get a little bit of cropping. You can see that the corners go over the metal support for the glass inside. So even if you got it as high as you could, which is where it is now, on a negative holder, um, it's still going to crop a teeny tiny little bit, which is alright if you could figure out how to make a negative holder that you can position dead centered. Someday I'll do that. Put the name in the front and push and push. If you want to make pictures with negatives that are smaller than 4x5, then you crank this knob down and the upper bellows extends. However, the top of the enlarger does not move, but you will need to move it up and down once you set this scale to the size negative that you'll be using. But you're, so you're still going to need a certain amount of headroom. But since 4x5 is the biggest, I wanted to show you those measurements. That's it for the Bessler 45H enlarger, H meaning hand crank, no motor.